Hi friends, it's that time, it's the end of the month and I have a lot to get into this month. If you're curious about why I'm in this setting, please wait till the end of the video and I'll give you a little brief rundown. But <laughs> just wanted to mention that because I know it looks a little bit different today, but I can't wait to talk about everything I watched because honestly, so much TV, so much movies. I feel like it's on overload at the moment. Do you guys feel like that? But I always seem to have trouble finding exactly what I want. And if there's a type of movie that's just gonna scratch my itch, sometimes I need some assistance and that's where today's sponsor comes in handy, which is Surfshark. So Surfshark is a VPN, which stands for Virtual Private Network. Not only do they protect your identity online and encrypt your data, they also can unlock geo-blocked content. So say if you wanted to watch a movie, a TV show, you really want to watch this one, but it's only available in some countries. You basically type in where you want to be, press OK, and you're there. I love Surfshark because they're a really easy platform to use, and they also have real people for their customer support. So if you ever have a problem or have a question, you can always ask. And they also have a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you're not sure and you just want to try it out, it's risk-free. You can get your money back, no questions asked. Use my code SPOOKY or the link in the description and you can get 83% off and three months extra for free. That's 83% off and three months extra for free. Why not try it today? If you're looking for a new VPN, this is the one for you. Okay, let's get into it. Wait, should we start with movies? I am using Letterboxd, the Letterboxd app as always. Everyone always asks, it's always linked down below. At the start of the month, I finally watched Malum. Malium? Malum? I never know how to say it. Um, but basically, if you saw The Last Shift in 2014, which I watched them back to back just so I could do a comparison, this is a reimagining, remaking by the same director of this film from not even 10 years ago. And I honestly did not like it as much as Last Shift. If you haven't seen Last Shift, it's like an indie film about this cop's first shift at a police station, but it's the the station's about to close down, so it's the last shift at that station, and it just happens to have this haunted cult aspect to it, and she's kind of locked in there by herself, wondering if she is losing it. Yeah, and look how creepy this entity is on the poster. I love it. Um, but the remake adds more to the story, really like thickens out the characters or deepens the characters, but I don't think it provided any value, any real value to the story. It kind of took away because they made it so detailed instead of having a simple story about like a haunted, one haunted night. They tried to put in details about the characters past and just different things that you don't need unless you're like setting up a whole franchise. And yeah, I really, I think that the, the first one was way better. So if you're gonna watch them and you haven't watched it either, just check out Last Shift. I wasn't a big fan, which is really sad. I watched You Hurt My Feelings, and I think that I really wasn't prepared for this one. It's just like a comedy slice of life drama. I thought, I don't know why I thought it was gonna be more dramatic. I hadn't seen anything by this director, and um, it's just a story about like this couple, one over here's the other one, talking poorly about them, and then they like, have to reframe their whole relationship in a kind of way, but it's not that serious. It was like an easy watch. I kind of expected it to be a little bit more profound, which I think was on me. I didn't really know. I wasn't really familiar with the director's work. Um, but yeah, I probably wouldn't recommend it to anyone here. I watched Reality. My gosh, I'm sure you guys have a lot of opinions on this one. Sydney Sweeney, and she is performing <laughs> this role that's actually from a play, but it's based on, stay with me, it's based on a transcript between a person and the FBI that have like, it's not an interrogation, but they have this meeting about these classified documents. And it's basically word for word. It's a really cool concept um, and it is like kind of spooky. I wasn't familiar with the actual story. So I know a lot of people, especially in America, would be more, more familiar with this. So it didn't really hit as hard because I was waiting for like this huge epic moment. And I think I'm just so used to horror and stuff being really dark that it didn't quite get to the full potential. But it's one of those films that when you like sit back and you really think about the situation, it, reality, which is the name, and the name of the woman, which is so crazy, uh, reality is so much stranger and more intense and scarier than fiction and this stripped down version of that I really appreciate it. It kind of reminded me of Dogville in a way <laughs> which it's not as dark as that. Well it kind of is because it's reality it's like yeah. anyway um, it's a very interesting way and concept to go about a story about a true story as well so I really appreciated that aspect and the acting is phenomenal um, but would I recommend it to you guys if you're interested in the true case or in these kinds of events, political events, probably. Um, I watched A Catch Killer and you know what? This looked really stock standard from all of the trailers. 
Um, this is basically about the old cop in the in the force, or I guess he's like a detective, and he takes the young woman under his wing, um, who's you know she's showing a lot of potential. Um, but it was actually quite good. I, I mean. When I say good, I mean for what I thought it was going to be about. But basically there's like a new, you know, she's a rookie cop and she somehow gets this position in um, this case, I guess, with the head detective to try and figure out who is doing these terrorist attacks um, in New York. I believe it was New York. Um, Baltimore, sorry, in Baltimore. Um, And yeah, I thought it was, if you're into like crime thrilling movies and you don't mind too much of that like cliche stuff I actually thought it was probably worth a watch which I love watching these kinds of movies with my partner and so this worked like really well for us if you're thinking about it and you're like oh it looks kind of cheesy it's it's fine and it has some good kind of twists and turns um it's got some a really brutal ending uh and yeah it kept me on my toes so that's all you can really ask for uh the next movie I watched is Strangeland which is peak 90s um and this one <laughs> This one, it was not great. <laughs> it was not great. I'd probably not watch again. Uh, but look how cool the cover is. Uh, this is about a man who is like luring women from the internet into his like sadistic little games. And it's like a detective. And it's almost like satanic panic but for the internet. And the reason I watched this is because I did a video based on social media horror. And a lot of people say that this is one of the first social media horror movies because they use like a DM, like an MSN, Yahoo, whatever, AOL, to contact the victims. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen this one. If not, you've definitely seen the cover in a VHS store like back in the day. <laughs> I watched Spider-Man across the Spideyverse. It should be Spideyverse. Anyway, um, I watched the first animated Spider-Man and I, I really enjoyed it and then so my partner he booked us tickets and I wasn't gonna say no loved it I thought it was really cool um I didn't rate this usually I don't rate things because I'm either uh, reviewing them here or on my Patreon for my Patreon members and the reason I didn't rate this is because I actually don't feel <laughs> like I'm allowed to because I don't even know how to skew <laughs> that and um, with everything else I watched. I don't know. I know I'm allowed to. It just felt really weird for me. I was like, I don't, I'd probably give it like a seven, an eight, maybe seven or an eight. Um, but it's also not my taste at all, but I can really appreciate it for what it is. I, I just think that the animation is so beautiful and the characters were really interesting and really cool. Lots of really cool concepts, easy to follow and just a lot of fun. I think it's, just, yeah, it's just really cool. Uh, so I'll be watching there's another one and there is there another one I can't how many are in this one is there one more guys I think there's one more so I'll be watching that after this I have no idea with Marvel that's not my forte I'm gonna stay in my lane so in saying that I watched In Fear and this is an Irish um independent kind of horror movie uh this is about uh not a couple they're not a couple but these two people who are dating and they go to this pub kind of in the middle of nowhere in the countryside and they ha something happens there and then from there they're trying to get to their hotel to stay for the night but they can't quite make it there everything seems to go wrong and it becomes this weird journey of like them trying to figure out what's actually happening I really wanted to like this film and I really wanted to stay with it but every time I watch it like I kept trying to get into it I just kept zoning out and I just there was I think there was just like it's something about the atmosphere was really off for me but I think if you picked the exact right time this could work really well but unfortunately it was not for me but if you do like I do think a lot of you guys might like this one it's all about the simplicity and the atmosphere um, maybe check this one out but I don't think it has quite the strongest most unique uh, structure or really direction uh, but uh, yeah I wanted to check it out after that I watched after um, and this is one of my ones that my patrons recommended um, and <laughs> this is another independent film very confusing another one that I actually I thought this one was going one direction it goes a completely different direction which was really weird it's about uh, two people who meet on a bus and then they wake up um, after the bus has crashed and they can't find anyone else in their town and it's just them two. And again, they're trying to figure out what's going on. I thought it was gonna go one direction. It went a completely other, the other way. And um, this is one <laughs> completely opposite to the last film I was talking about. This is one that I wish uh, stayed more simple and didn't have so many trying to put in so much unique aspects because the simplicity of the idea of waking up and just being those two people and trying to figure out the mystery is a lot but they add a lot of layers into the mystery that it becomes confusing what is actually happening and 
um, not in a cool like surrealist let's try and figure it out and analyze later way in a way like it felt like four movies like pushed together so not sure if I'd recommend if you're into something <laughs> looking for something unique maybe after this I watched The Starling this is on Netflix I believe it's on Netflix it's Melissa McCarthy and this really intense intense story about grief and loss it's basically about a couple that have lost a child um this happens like you know five minutes into the film and it's about how how they take grief differently and accepting and moving on and what that means and um it's all kind of wrapped up in this metaphor about this starling this bird that they find um that's quite aggressive in their yard it's a very uh just a drama I wouldn't say it's easy going because it's quite sad but it's just meant to be like a hopeful drama I thought it was I thought it was all right I cried my eyes out I didn't think it was anything outstanding but I did ball <laughs> but I mean if you don't cry in films like this something is wrong with you I don't know about you guys but I cry in like all most films to be honest I rewatched the Stoker or Stoker sorry not the Stoker um because I saw this when this first came to the cinema and I just couldn't really get fully into it and it seems like a film I would love uh and yeah I felt like I kind of went through the same thing again it's got Mia I'm not gonna do her last name <laughs> I think every time I say it I butchered it and it's got Nicole Kidman um and it's about this family that I again grieving she's meant to be like mentally ill mother and her daughter um their uncle who they well the father's <laughs> their the father who died his brother comes to stay with them and it's meant to be like this kind of creepy modern gothic kind of tale and it's meant to be about how like the mother is kind of a little bit unhinged and I'm not too sure if that kind of floats now, like just re-watching it. It's just like a little bit iffy what they were trying to say. Um, I think it's a cool, like it's got a cool kind of mystery element to it, which I think is definitely worth the watch. And it has a cool uh, atmosphere to it where it is like modern kind of gothic. And she's like, she reminds me of like Wednesday Adams or like Coraline or something like that. Who's just, they're just like very unique and different and just like go with their own, um, their own bit of the drama. She lives in this house with her mom and it's all like this intellectual, <laughs> uh, I don't know, new age gothica. And then it's just like, she goes to school and there's just like normal kids there. And I think that that's like just a very strange aspect of it. The lens, because it's almost like when you're in a such a stylized land, like a Wes Anderson film or something like that. And then all of a sudden there's normal people like who aren't symmetrical, <laughs> you know, with crazy colored clothes, like walking down the street. So I kind of liked that aspect. I think it's like very strange and it's a very interesting way to present someone who is like offbeat. So I like that aspect and I really wanted to love this film. But again, it's just kind of like a, it's good. It's definitely worth it for the mystery. Um, but I just wish, I just, I don't know why. Just something about it just feels a bit wrong to me. Um, I mean, if you watch it, you probably know why. I watched Amy Schumer and look, for people who think I pandered to this audience, I like Amy Schumer, okay? So would I ever admit that online if I... <laughs> um, but this special was average. Um, yeah, I like Amy Schumer, but this special, I was really let down. That's all I have to say. It's on Netflix. There was, there's no, there's nothing. I was just like, what? I look, I think other people have, oh, I mean, everyone's going to rate it low. No one likes her, but <laughs> moving on. Um, I watched Society. I was meant to do a Does This Offend You uh, with Vicky, which we're going to do next month um, with Hatch to Reschedule. So I'll t talk about that. We're doing, and it's going to be on my channel. So if you want to hang out live, just keep um, updated. I'll put it on my, my community page on YouTube or on Instagram. Um, but basically we're doing society and eyes wide shut, which I love eyes wide shut. So I'm, we're talking about kind of like sexy cults. <laughs> That's definitely not the right word, but I can't really say the other word, <laughs> but, uh, yes. Yeah, so we're going to do a pairing on that. So I'll leave that for then. We then watched Luther, the Luther movie, which is on Netflix, which we've meant to watch for a, a while now. Actually, that's just new. I thought it was there for a while. Anyway, uh, we, my partner and I, we watched the Luther TV show. We really like it. How could you not? Ildris Elba, love him. Absolutely love him. Um, and this is like just a long episode um, of Luther. And it's also an episode that you don't have to know anything else about him. So if you're thinking about watching 
the TV show, but TV's not your jam. Um, I promise I'll never say that again. Uh, this would be the go because it's a movie. Uh, it's like all, I mean, it's a long movie, 129 minutes, but it's got the whole detective, the whole round thing. I mean, I would say it's just like a TV episode. I don't feel like it's anything more epic. I feel like as well, the mystery element was very strange in this. I don't know how you guys feel about the formula where you kind of know who the killer is and, and then you watch like the hero or the detective or whatever try and find out, but you already know. Sometimes I don't like that. Sometimes I don't want to know and I want it to be like the twist in a mystery. And I felt like some of the information we knew before it happened and it was like, yeah, okay, now what? So anyway, um, but if you like Luther, I think you should watch it. Um, I watched I Still See You. This took me so long to get through, but it has Bella Thorne and I, I can't help... <laughs> I can't help it. I like Bella Thorne. I am very much exposing myself today. But Bella Thorne is, just, there's just something captivating. Um, anyway, uh, this is Bella Thorne in like a sci-fi, like low budget kind of indie sci-fi horror. Um, and basically it's a cool, really cool concept. It's about one day, like an apocalypse or rapture kind of happens. All these people who die, they are like imprinted on the earth still. It's like it, they're a like glimmers of them, if that makes sense. They're not actually there, but it's like their ghost repeats things that they would do that day. And she's moving through the world and she's like really hung up on the, the death of her dad. And then she realizes, she sees like a new, one of these new kind of ghosts appear and there's no such thing as a new one. So she is like, what are these things really? And she finds the, <laughs> the mysterious new boy at school who has a tragic past. It's very uh, Twilight <laughs> and um she, uh, you know, he's like all into him and he has a conspiracy theory and basically they go down that hole together. I'm actually making it sound pretty good, but <laughs> it's, a, it's a little bit strung out. It's overly like emotional when it doesn't really feel like it gives you that kind of build up for the characters. It's not really relatable or anything like that. Uh, but I, I liked the idea. <laughs> uh, I watched Two Leslie. This is a beautiful movie. What can't um, Andrea Riceboro do? She's amazing. Uh, this is about a woman who wins the lottery. Like it just kind of shows in the title sequence that she wins the lottery and it's about actually what happened to her afterwards. She blows the money and it's like her putting her life back together in middle America, going through addiction and loss and yeah, it's just like a slow drama about, you know, getting your shit together basically. But yeah, I thought it was a nice tale of like someone trying to redeem their whole life story. Um, so it's powerful in that way. So I really did enjoy that one. Um, I watched The Wrath of Becky. Oh my God, this was so cool. I'm so sad this didn't come out in cinemas in Australia. It was came out in cinemas in America. But um, if you don't know, like the first Becky came out during the panorama. And so everyone was at home watching it. And so when this one came to cinemas, I was so sad because that would have been such a cool like full circle moment for everyone. But unfortunately, it didn't come out here. And um, yeah, I thought it was really good. I thought it lived up to the original. The original is just kind of a fun, like kick-ass slasher with a girl who's on a mission. And um, yeah, it's like, it's like such a cool movie. And uh, there's just like a lot of one-liners, really gross gore. And this one really lived up to the gore value. I could not believe some of the gore. You know, when you watch the, some of these modern horror movies, they're really good with gore. I know people don't like to admit it, but sometimes you watch and you're like, Whoa. like cocaine bear, like you, act, how? <laughs> and this one, it definitely has that. So it's an easy watch. I know it doesn't sound like it, but it is an easy watch. It's meant to be fun. It's meant to be like just really easy to follow who the bad guys are, who the good guys are. So I was impressed. I mean, it wasn't anything groundbreaking, but I was impressed. Um, I then watched Mainstream. This is a wild movie to exist. And I wanted to, like every movie I watch, I don't want to waste my time. I wanted to love this film. I did not. <laughs> uh, this has a, a pretty crazy cast. Maya Hawke, um, Nat Wolf, who I always think is his brother, Jason Schwartzman, uh, Johnny Knoxville. I mean, you can see it all. Andrew Garfield. Uh, it is the story of like this guy who works in a mall and he meets this girl who just like wants to change his life and put him on social media and make him into a star. They try and make it so it doesn't see, it seems like they're very like alternative people, but what they're seeking is just like fame and attention. And it it's just a really weird concept. And it, obviously it's meant to be on the nose. Like that's the whole point of it. But it, it kind of, it tries so hard to go off and be something different and something really alluring and add a lot of flair. Like there's a lot of weird montages and emojis that pop up and stuff like that. And although I love that kind of stuff normally, it just feels incomplete because it, it feels like it's promising like this big flashy epic 
uh, story and it doesn't really deliver on that in the end I think it's it becomes this pretty common story of a rise and fall although it's just with like alternative characters and the dialogue at points is like very cringy I wanted to like it more but it was just kind of like all over the place and the ending is just so abrupt uh, yeah, but such a weird movie to exist and no one talks about it. That's how I found out about it. my friend Rob. Um, he actually said, no, like, I, I've never heard anyone talk about this movie. And I was like, whoa, I've never even seen this. So I, I decided to watch it. Um, I then watched Follow Her. And this is a new movie that just came out. Um, <laughs> this movie, I hate when people in my comment section say, oh my God, this like, especially about Megan, people are like, oh my God, Megan's just trying to be chucky. I'm like, I can understand, things can have the same theme. But this movie felt like it was really trying to be creep. <laughs> um, it's about a girl who, she actually, she has a really interesting job where she's kind of like, I, I don't really fully understand, but she was trying to like, lure men into exposing what they actually want through Craigslist ads. Like someone saying, oh, I like, I want someone for this, project and then like revealing that it was actually a um I guess a lure to get women in there so she's kind of on this vigilante kind of um trip where she's doing that and exposing people on social media but she runs into this guy and his plot is a very different one and you know lures her into the woods and then plays a game with her basically so it felt very creep if you've seen it you know I don't want to say too much but you know like the similarities are, are pretty crazy I couldn't really keep up with it in the end uh I mean I could keep up with it but I just couldn't really believe it at the end and although when you watch these films they're meant to be just for fun there were some really serious topics that were kind of just glazed over so I didn't really know what it was trying to be and I, I just didn't really like it um it wasn't really for me um, I watched Inside Man, which is a movie that I wanted to watch forever. Um, it's a Spike Lee film about, it's actually quite clever. It's about a bank robbery, which isn't what you think. And the, t the detectives who are trying to figure out who are the robbers and who are the victims. So it's, yeah, it's just a really cool true crime. There's a couple of Spike Lee, like moments that are just, I don't even know what he was doing. There's this one shot that is just so bizarre um, and doesn't fit with the rest of the movie, but uh, acting is superb, casting is superb, and I think it was a really cool concept. Um, and I, yeah, as I said, I like to watch a lot of like crime thrillers. I find them really easy and like mind numbing to watch. So I enjoyed watching this with my partner finally. Um, and then I watched Cemetery Man, which <laughs> my friend Daniel, who's one of my um, patrons is gonna kill me uh, <laughs> for saying Cemetery Man because uh, that is, or Cemetery Man, uh, because that's like the American title. The original title is De La Morte, <laughs> De La Morte. I definitely butchered that. Uh, this, if you've never seen this film, you definitely need to watch it. It is the most bizarre. I forget how bizarre it is every time I've seen it. And I have, I did it once for 31 Days of Horror. I did like a review of this one. It's about a man who's like, works in a cemetery, like a grave digger, you know what I mean? Uh, and <laughs> how do I even explain it? He's basically in charge of like making sure the dead stay dead. Um, and uh, he falls in love, let's say that. He falls in love and uh, it's about love and death and um, the cycle of that. And it's just, I can't even explain the sexual nature of this film is very questionable, um, but it is very, very unique, amazing um, theatrical scenery and music. And it is just a ride. And it's, I watched it with a group watch with a bunch of my patrons. And I think most of them <laughs> loved it and were really confused by it, but we're all down for a second watch, which I mean, how can you, that is like the best compliment to any movie to be like, I don't really know what just happened, but I want to watch it again. So yeah, that's Cemetery Man, Cemetery Man, De La Morte, De La Mor. I'm so sorry. And then I just recently watched History of the Occult. <sighs> uh, this film is from Argentina. I, I wanted to watch this film for so long. I can't tell you, so long. And I finally got the opportunity and I didn't, I didn't really like it that much. This is, it's such a cool concept, such a cool concept, but I just couldn't get into it. And I feel like I'm the only one because look at these reviews. Look at the, I, I feel like I'm the only one. So go watch this because it's just me. It's just me. Um, basically it's during, there's like a 60 minute program. It counts down to, it's like the last 60 minutes before midnight. And this is the last ever episode of that show. So they're going to reveal, have a big reveal. 
and um, they really just tease they're going to expose a conspiracy. But it's got to do with like all these different people involved and it kind of cuts around. Um, I really wish they just stayed on the TV show aspect because it cuts around to different characters and how they're reacting. And it really just took me out where they have like a timer and it's a countdown and it's almost a countdown exactly to the movie. The movie goes for like an hour and 20 minutes and um, it starts like about like... 11 minutes in the countdown so it's almost exactly on time and uh it would have been a really cool concept if they stuck to that exactly but it seems like everyone else liked it it's a very stylized approach black and white and yeah they play around a lot with aspect ratio and yeah it's quite artsy uh but i didn't love it i really wanted to okay what did i watch this month get ready <laughs> I know I started watching Vanderpumps, I call, I call it Vanderpumps, <laughs> Vanderpump Rules last month. I finished it at the start of this month, whenever the last reunion was, I finished it the day before the last reunion. I watched 10 seasons of that show. I'd never done that before. I watched 10 seasons within, I think it was like four weeks or three weeks. Is that not the most insane thing you've ever heard? 10 seasons of a show. So by the time the reunion came, and I know a lot of people are probably sick of hearing about this, but by the time the reunion came, I had everything up here and everyone's bringing out what Lala did six seasons ago. I knew, I knew, I knew what Raquel did like three days ago. <laughs> I don't know how you distinguish before and after <laughs> world events. That was before and after I knew about Vanderpumps. Um, so I'm Vanderpumped out, but uh, I got it all off my chest. I actually did a Twitch stream. I've been on Twitch so much, guys, um, mainly playing horror games. So if you ever want to come hang out, please do, because I'm on there like at least twice a week. I love it. I didn't expect to love doing horror games, so that's usually what I do. But I did one on Vanderpumps, uh, just talking about that. And basically one other person came in who understood what I was talking about. And we had such a good time um, chatting it up. But I got all off my chest. It's all out of my system. I'm Vanderpumped out, okay? So all good. So I went on from that to watching Selling Sunset because I needed to catch up with the new season. I was not impressed with the new season, by the way. Especially after watching something like Vanderpump Rules, which is, I guess these kids don't really have anything else going for them. Their fame is that they work at this bar um, and it's it's so much more hungry and they're so much more like gritty and real because they're just so desperate. <laughs> uh, and then to go into something like Selling Sunset where they're all, they all have money, they all are really worried about their self-image and they just don't say anything edgy at all. So that was like really boring to go through and it felt like that season, I don't know who else watched it. I know a lot of you guys like reality TV. But that season was just like nothing, just like, like you, you just watch it in a couple of hours and nothing really happened. So I was kind of, yeah, let down by that, but I don't know what I expected. I did watch horror. Don't worry, guys. I watched Red Rose. I actually had put this off and I was waiting to watch it, waiting for time. But I wanted, I thought this was going to be <laughs> about Rose Red. I don't know what I had in my head, but this is not Rose Red, <laughs> the reincarnated. It's uh, Red Rose, which is, it's a British TV show, a British horror show about these bunch of teens who uh, find this mobile app that uh, kind of gives them the wishes or like is going to grant stuff and then takes a hold on their life and blackmails them, all that good stuff. We've definitely seen this before in a lot of horror movies. It was very similar to a couple of horror movies I've seen. Uh, I thought it was really good acting though. I really liked the UK like based cast and it was interesting to a degree, but it felt quite straightforward for a whole um, season. It might have been better like as a movie. I would have like really loved it as a movie. But for a whole season, it, like following these kids and like them trying to find out the mystery. And they were really getting into the kids' personal lives, which I thought was really interesting. Kind of setting it up for like a future season where like our focus obviously is meant to be on the horror. Um, I guess that's what a TV show is meant to do. But it just felt like they were branching out instead of like focusing on the scary parts at times. But um, I still thought it was well worth a watch. I, I think you should definitely watch it if you're into that kind of social media, I guess, horror. I watched Shiny Happy People, and this is a four-part documentary um, on the Duggar family, which are a fundamentalist uh, Christian family um, that have a lot of controversy. They had their own TV show, um, 18 and Counting, I believe it was called. I know a little bit about them because I watch um, Fundy Fridays and uh, I thought it was a really comprehensive documentary. I don't keep up too much with this stuff. Um, my friend Victoria, who is like very, she knew a lot about this. She said there was like a little bit of information that wasn't quite correct and they focused on different aspects to what she thought they were going to focus on. But for someone who isn't 
aware of that kind of culture, especially in America. I thought it was really interesting. So if you're into like religious scandals, uh, this is definitely one to watch, especially if you don't know anything about it. I think it explains it so well. It's just like nonstop information and it's not really all about the drama, which I thought was really helpful because it's just not like overly produced. Like the content makes itself. You don't have to like ham it up. Um, and I just thought it was, I thought it was really, really well done. I haven't seen a documentary that had so much packed information that was told in such a straightforward manner to someone who doesn't understand it at all. And it was just, it was just like a knowledge bomb, which I really enjoyed. I have started watching, I think we're halfway through The Crowded Room, which is a new Apple TV show. It stars Tom Holland and Amanda Sinfried. It's like based in the seventies. It's about this kid who moves into this house. Um, and it's kind of like told the story of how he committed a crime that you see at the start and he's being investigated uh, and he's being like interrogated about it. Um, so it's kind of like going back in the past and like saying how he got to that position. The, it's quite disturbing. And I saw there was a lot of buzz about um, Tom Holland. He said that he uh, isn't go he's gonna take a break from acting because he's so disturbed by the character he played. I can understand that to a certain degree. Um, I mean, I can't, I don't know, I'm not an actor, but um, I definitely see what he's saying. But I also find as much as the film may be disturbing, it's quite predictable. It seems very obvious what's going on. And I wonder, I want to know if any of you guys are watching it and if you've already clued on to like what's happening, uh, like the mystery, because there's a mystery element and I, we're halfway through the show and I feel like what else is there to discover? Because it seems like the answer is right in our faces. If you've seen it, please tell me that you understand what I'm talking about because we feel like we're going crazy. We're like, is this not obvious what's actually happening? Um, and do that in the comments by saying spoiler first and then just press enter a bunch of times so it's like hidden by the fold of your comment and then tell me what your thoughts are if you're watching um, The Crowded Room because girl, it's obvious. <laughs> well, I feel like the atmosphere and like the 70s like vibe and um, aesthetic of it is kind of cool but there's also some weird kind of changes in it where it shows almost like this stock footage of like New York and London and stuff in the 70s. And then it goes to like these current scenes where it's meant to be in the 70s. And it's so obvious that it's not the same. I just feel like it's just really disjointed with how it looks um, in some regards and how it wants to look. So yeah, I probably wouldn't recommend it to you guys actually. But if you are watching it, I do want to know what you think. And of course I watched Black Mirror and I got a lot of comments from you guys asking what I thought. I did a whole ranking of the new episodes on my Patreon. I don't mean to keep plugging it, but I really just, I didn't know that you guys wanted that video and I've done it on my Patreon. My Patreon's only $2 a month, by the way. If you do want to support what I do here, it is greatly appreciated. And the link's always down below. You get bonus videos every single week. Um, yeah, thank you to everyone who's on there. Um, but uh, yeah, I did a ranking. I honestly had the same impression as a lot of you guys. I saw a lot of opinions online. It didn't feel like Black Mirror. Two or three of the episodes kind of based itself around technology. A lot of them don't. And when I see Black Mirror or where you hear Black Mirror, you think about the Black Mirror on the phone. That's the whole idea of it. Like technology talking about communication and relationships and what that means and what, you know, future technologies, how that's terrifying. And they're definitely making it more American Horror Story. I don't know if you guys felt that too. Uh, and of course, my favorite one was Beyond the Sea. The ending really took me by the surprise. I thought I could like, pinpoint where it was gonna go and it didn't, which I really like. That was like OG Black Mirror to me. So be interested to see like what they're doing. It's really strange because it's like, if they don't want to focus on technology, that's totally fine. Just stop making episodes of Black Mirror and call it something different, like from the creators of Black Mirror. This is British horror stories. I don't know, make something like a little bit more of a spinoff. I just think that I, like they had so long to lock down these scripts and I felt like they were a little bit average um, or not as unique as like past ideas for how long they have in between seasons. So yeah, I was a little bit let down by that. I won't lie, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, they were still fun and it's always fun. Anthologies can be fun. I'm coming around, um, but Black Mirror has always been one of my favorites and um, at least we had like one or two great moments in there. I actually really liked the um, Henry Locke, Locke Henry one, even though that really wasn't Black Mirror. I really liked the idea of it and the story. I wish that would be made into a horror movie, like a standalone. I think that would have been really cool as well. But thank you all so much for being here. If you have not been keeping up with me on socials, I did put on my community post, I had a family emergency. Uh, I just wanted to let you guys know it was about Gromit. He is unwell and I'm actually going to do a whole video on his situation. The reason being, it's a long situation to explain. And um, I can't say if he's okay, by the way, like at this point, I wanna be able to tell you in detail 
so you can refer to that because things are yeah it's not great he's become such a huge part of my channel and uh i think that it is important because you see him in you know he's in like 50 percent of my videos and i would really like to bring some awareness to it i'll get into that later when i can make a video i will i just like we need to things to be finalized before I can jump the gun and tell you about the whole situation. On that somber note, thank you all so much for being here and supporting me. I really appreciate it. That's why I'm upstairs. If I didn't explain that, I'm upstairs because I'm looking after him now. He cannot use the stairs right now. Um, so I have to sit with him up here. So I have a makeshift background, which is, that's my TV. <laughs> anyway, um, thank you all so much. Thank you for your kind comments. They really meant everything to me. Um, and I just really appreciate you all. So I'll talk to you all very soon. Stay safe and stay spooky. Bye, friends. <laughs>